Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today we are going to be breeding from scratch the Gastrodon that ended up winning Worlds, the biggest tournament pretty much in the last few years for uh, Pokemon, specifically uh, the mainline game. Uh, ended up happening the uh, other weekend, and just the other day, uh, we ended up having the drop of the actual team of the person who ended up winning. And I figured I'd go over the Gastrodon as it is a bit unique in how it is built. So if we go over to the uh, pace spin thing that he has over here, uh, we can end up seeing the full overall Gastrodon. Uh, some of it's pretty standard, obviously. Leftover Storm Drain because you needed to have both immune to ground and water. Uh, pretty like mixed uh, defensive offensive kind of build. Calm nature so it has a little bit better against uh, special defense. However... The IVs is where it's kind of interesting. So zero attack, pretty standard. This is to make sure things like foul play, confusion, don't do as much damage to you. However, there is a very, very interesting one that you normally wouldn't see, and that is a eight speed IV. So of course, the way that speed works in Pokemon is the quicker the Pokemon is, the uh, the order that they go in. So uh, not counting for priority brackets, if something has like 150 speed and something else has 140, the one thing that has 150 will end up going before the thing that has 140. So Gastrodon's a pretty interesting Pokemon in that it is pretty slow, uh, generally speaking. I mean, by generally speaking, I mean, yeah, it's, it's very, very slow as far as its uh, base speed is concerned. However, it has access to moves like Icy Wind, which can end up lowering down the speed. So the reason for having an 8 speed instead of uh, what you would normally have, like a 0 or a uh, 31, is to make sure that under Trick Room, which reverts all, inverts all speeds, you're still slow enough to uh, be very slow in Trick Room, but quick enough where with an Icy Wind, a proc or two of this, you can outspeed very specific things. And uh, the World Champion likely already knew every single thing that it could and could not outspeed with one or two or maybe with three uh, Icy Winds. So it kind of already knew uh, preemptively uh, about what speed stat it needed. And that speed stat happens to be an eight. However, breeding an eight is rather convoluted compared to breeding zero or 31, as you generally do not have anything to do it with. So if I go uh, take out this window and we go over here, uh, I'm going to be showing the process for basically getting everything that you need from scratch. Getting the ditto that you end up needing to end up uh, making this. Getting the uh, shellos that you need all the way from scratch so we can end up uh, having that. And then uh, I just ended up getting one other one from our den. So we had something to uh, breed it with that had some amount of IVs. Obviously, you'd, if you already have one, you'd want to use a six IV one. And then uh, we ended up going through the whole uh, generation process where we had Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4. And by the genera fourth generation of eggs we ended up having the final result. So basically, I'm going to be going over this uh, whole process, and uh, this will end up resulting in basically a completely battle-ready exact version of what was used to win the uh, World Championship. And I will also be going over some of the Masudo method that we did uh, after the fact, which ended up giving us a very perfect Shellos that has the correct nature and 6 IV. So that was uh, pretty nice. It's actually rarer than getting a shiny with the way that we ended up having to breed it. So that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's start getting into this uh, process. Oh, also one other thing. This is how a Gastrodon is normally built. And by normally, I mean like the kind of more standard build where you kind of do it. Uh, it's more like a defensive, all in defensive, where you end up having uh, your HP special defense, defense kind of almost evenly spread, uh, where you end up going for uh, Ice Beam and Earth Power. Uh, basically same build without the Icy Wind. Uh, this has a 10% chance to freeze rather than 100% chance to lower the speed stat, uh, which is a bit more standard. However, a lot easier to breed because it's double zero on the, actually you can see it right here, it's double zero on the uh, two IVs there rather than needing a very specific eight. So eight is a, a bit of a weird number. To be able to get an eight, we're basically looking for, uh, I end up marking these here, um, any of them that have a decent speed. So we're looking for dittos that have a decent speed. I ended up putting a little blue mark on every single one of them that ended up having this uh, decent speed. And we then have to go compare it to the chart on what it would actually have. So if it has a negative nature, it would end up having a 60 speed. If it has a neutral nature, which is the one that we ultimately ended up getting, it'll have a 67 speed. And if it has a positive nature into speed, uh, with eight, it will end up having a 73. So we're essentially looking for a ditto that has one of these three values. It is a one in 32 chance, as is pretty much everything that we're gonna be hunting for uh, in this video. We want to be going for the full hunt as we will be here for a little while. The full process for this initially 
from scratch took about two hours however as you'll see a little bit later once we started doing misuda and we already had the breeding base it took closer to about 12 minutes per perfect uh gastron which is more where you're expecting probably closer to like the 15 20 minute mark to have a perfect one but we're doing a little bit more from a scratch so it took a little bit uh, longer the initial time though this video will not be that long as we're kind of just showing the method rather than doing the entire method uh, otherwise we'll be here for a little while for doing the whole thing from scratch but we're kind of showing the process so uh we need to go get ourselves ultimately a uh, ditto that meets that description because not every single decent is the same uh like right here for example uh if we actually go break down the actual stat you can see this has a 68 the 68 is not a 67 uh, however the 67 is a 67 so we know from the chart that we were just looking at here that this is indeed the correct ditto and the one that, that we ended up breeding with so how do we end up going and getting this initial ditto uh there is an island in the uh, dlc uh, that is basically just all dittos and is going to be one of our, or pretty much the only place where you'd really want to farm this as pretty much every other method uh, within the game is rather slow. Uh, this island is right over here, uh, left of this gigantic whale lord. So if we go over to uh, that island, it'll have a billion dittos on it. And basically we're just looking to catch roughly 32 of them. For this video, we'll just be catching one as we're not going to go through the whole process of trying to do that again. However... Uh, we'll just go catch one real quick and uh, just kind of show them. So uh, there's a couple of ways you can go about it. For this particular one, we're probably just going to throw a quick ball, run away, and then um, be good to go. Uh, for when I was actually catching them, I was going down the dusk ball method, but it's currently not um, nighttime right now uh, since I did it the other day as far as all the breedings for these. However, uh, we will just do the quick ball. So basically, you want something with smoke ball in your leading slot. Uh, right now, we have our uh, one that actually normally lays our egg. Uh, the bird that has flame body, because that makes eggs hatch uh, twice as quick. Uh, we have the Gel um, Galvantula here, mostly just for items. This will be useful for something a little bit later, uh, this video, because we need leftovers. So uh, we're going to get the leftovers from scratch as well. Uh, and then um, these are mostly just in case we find a shiny, so we can preserve a very rare ball. Uh, we have something to lower down to 1 HP if we find a shiny, and we have something to sleep it if we find a shiny. Obviously, the chance of finding a shiny off of a single one here, probably not happening. So this entire island has a billion of those. They spawn all uh, throughout here. Uh, you see them over here. Some of them are uh, in place of these things occasionally. But basically, we'll just run into a ditto. Go and catch it real quick. And then... Oh, no way! <laughs> no! Okay, I need to explain this real quick. No. No. I am like 2,000 dry on this. Have the 500... Ki no. Okay, well, um, quick uh, side note on this video. How to catch a shiny ditto. No. 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 <laughs> no. Okay. So, uh, he hasn't transformed yet. How do we want to do this? I have a bad lead. I would not normally have a lead of... Um, because I want him to transform into you. So you're less annoying. So let me do that initially. Oh, I can't believe this. <laughs> okay, well, quick distraction on this video. Sorry about this. Uh, but we are doing this all in real time. And <laughs> do I do want to catch this? I'll show it after. I actually have 999 for the ditto. I have a... I believe almost 2,000 checks because I kind of just started to stop even checking. Okay, so now he transformed into something very non-annoying. Um, we're now going to go and uh, lower it down to 1 HP. It doesn't have anything that can end up recoiling itself, so we should be good. We're going to lower it down to 1 HP, go and yawn it, and then we're going to go and catch it in a rare ball. So what ball do we want to go catch this thing in? Probably Dream. Dream's pretty cool. It's going to be sleeping anyway, so it's probably almost guaranteed chance. I'm actually not sure what the odds are on uh, Dream Ball specifically, but we'll find out. Okay. Oh no, I forgot I have substitute on it. No, why? Why do I have... Okay, quick question. Why on earth do I have substitute on that? <laughs> well, I should have given it like protect or something. I, I think I was doing it so it would take like some amount of damage for when I would like ball it. Because that still counts as damage towards the thing. But it's really annoying when we're trying to catch the shiny. <laughs> okay, he doesn't have anything that can hurt himself because substitute cannot actually... Oh, don't accidentally use leaf blade. <laughs> no. Okay, so we have false swipe here. Normally I... Oh, I forgot. Oh no. Oh, gosh. I struggle of randomly finding a shiny when you're not expecting to actually find a shiny. I forgot I have choice picks on it. <laughs> normally, I have only false white, but I also forgot I normally don't actually run substitute on uh, the uh, little things here. So, oh, gosh, it's going to be... So, I need to... Yeah, I basically have to switch and then switch back. That's going to be so annoying. Okay, we are catching this thing right here and right now. <laughs> this is happening. We're not failing this shiny. No, at this rate, we're probably going to fail this shiny. So he needs to do anything but substitute. Thank you, Nuzzle. That is perfectly fine. Now, just don't substitute again, and we'll be good to go. I almost just want to nuzzle him back. But obviously, we do not want to actually kill this thing. Okay, so can we please just land one thing? So all we need to do is just false wipe him once, and just don't use substitute this turn. Gosh. 
Because with Substitute, that would be some amount of damage. Good, good, good. Okay. That we could end up having for when we're catching with the ball. But in this particular situation, we very much do not want it substituting. So we're going to fall swipe here. We are now going to go and yawn it. Okay, so we switch over to Pokemon. We switch over to our good old uh, Snorlax over here. And now we're going to go use a yawn on it. Same one that we ended up using for our Calyrex uh, Shadow. Though there, actually, I did realize there was actually a better way to do it. I kind of forgot something in the game actually has Scruffy, which allows False Swipe to hit on ghosts. Whereas instead I was doing it like very weirdly with a, a Snorlax. Right, we have to be careful. This thing could actually kill itself with PPs if we keep getting unlucky here. Uh, luckily, once it's sleeping, we should get it very first uh, try here. So we should go get Eon. Right, it's now drowsy. Okay. And now all we do just to make sure we don't lose our ball is switch over to our little uh, ball guy over here. Actually, ball gal, I think we actually ended up doing here. Just double check before you end up throwing your ball that you don't already have a ball on your uh, ball fetcher. Uh, just in case, uh, I'm pretty sure almost guaranteed we do not right now. As you can see, he's currently sleeping. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe we go for Safari Ball or something. Oh, uh, but isn't it already available in Safari Ball? Maybe Sport Ball. I'm actually a big fan of Sport Ball. Um, I'm not sure about some other people, but I'm a huge, huge fan of Sport Ball. Uh, okay, so we can see here we do not have an item. As you can see, these have items. These specifically do not have items. They very specifically need to not. So let's go use... Uh, you know, I'm just going to do Dream. Dream seems like a good way. It, it, it fits with Ditto more. So we're going to go for the, uh, the ball here. End up clicking Use. It's sleeping, so there should be an almost guaranteed chance. And yeah, let's go get our Dream Ball Ditto. <laughs> That's something I was expecting to get this video, but I'll take it. You better stay in there. I'm not sure what the odds are, but it should... Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> it should be absurdly high. Like, absurdly, absurdly high. But there we go. We now have ourselves a Dream Ball Ditto. In the shiny variants. Caught in Sword. Anyways, <laughs> so in other news, um, does this have decent? <laughs> so of course, uh, back to what the video is actually about. Uh, we're trying to find a decent. So for the purpose of this video, this ditto is completely useless to us. Uh, also, uh, when finding a competitive ditto, you actually want to have uh, zero... Um, wait, which one did you actually need zero again? Zero speed, so that you struggle after it. So for competitiveness, this is actually a really bad ditto. Can't really breed with it, but hey, a shiny ditto and a dream ball. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, real quick aside, um, gosh, I have so many uh, attempts trying to get this thing. So if we go into our uh, Pokédex real quick, and we go over to uh, Ditto real quick, we are at... Uh, oh, wait, I have an alphabetical right now. Uh, so if we go all the way up to Ditto, uh, it stops tracking the number because it is such a high amount of attempts to try to find this thing. Uh, if you would ever go and get there, because you can still do a knockout method to end up having it spawn more often. Uh, it already spawns enough that you don't necessarily need to, but you still can. If I could ever realize how the alphabet works, we can go over to DI. And uh, as you can see there, uh, number of battle. Pretty, oh, wait, did we not actually hit over 999? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Whenever you just run into them and run, it doesn't actually count. This is how many I killed, but we definitely did way over 2,000 uh, trying to find this thing. I forgot. It doesn't count every single time you ended up initiating. I think it only counts when you catch it and or kill it. But uh, there we go. Shiny Ditto. Cool. Anyways, in other news, we basically just keep catching those. Hopefully get lucky and find a shiny. Oh, okay, I need to throw down safe. <laughs> uh, hopefully, luckily, you'll get a shiny. But you're mostly lucky to keep doing that until you ended up catching yourself a 8-speed uh, one, which is what we saw over here. Just basically mark all the ones that are decent. Go and check every single one that is decent for their actual uh, speed stat. Like this guy over here, we can end up seeing that he is not the correct value. He is a 75. Uh, for plus, it would have to be a 73. And uh, just keep doing this until you find yourself, uh, use quick balls, use dust balls, use repeat balls, whatever you want. And uh, do it until you end up finding yourself a specifically 67 or the ones that we saw in the chart earlier. Uh, we're looking for either a 60 if it's minus, a 67 if it's neutral, which is one's neutral, and a 73 if it is plus. And that's the main thing that we are uh, looking for. Anyways, so... Let's go and uh, go to the next step. So we need ourselves a Shellos. Ideally a Shellos with uh, zero attack, and then you can end up catching it in a special ball if you want. In this case, I end up doing a Lure Ball, as Lure Ball works pretty good with a uh, Shellos, because it doesn't matter uh, which variant it is, it just goes with all of them, because it's both red and blue, and both the two versions of Gastrodon are, uh, this one's blue, and of course the other one's red, so. Uh, it's a nice one just to kind of have for it, since it's very flexible, um, if you're sending it out for, like, breeding bases and stuff like that to other people. Anyways, so let's go and do this uh, next step. Um, that'd be funny if we could get another shiny, there's no way. Uh, I have, like, no kill count on this other one. Uh, so let's go over to where Shellos normally reside. I'm not sure of every location, but the one I specifically used for this one was the cave. Uh, if I could actually remember where on earth this cave is, because I have not bothered playing this 
too much. And we did this uh, a little while back. If I'm not mistaken, it's this one because this was the one for chapter... Wait, where's the chapter 3 cave? Hold up. Is that the chapter 3 cave? That is the chapter 3 cave. Gosh, why is the format of this map so weird? I, I can't wait till Scarlet and Violet because that is <laughs> such a better map overall. Wait, is this even the right spot? Oh, gosh. Oh, wait, wait. It was the one off of... I remember now. It's the one off of the water town. It's like right under the water town. There it is. I was going to say, because that seems too high. Like, that's later in the game area. My bad. It's uh, right over here. I got too many random caves. So let's go over to uh, this cave right here. It should be right in the opening area. There's a triple spawn. We can just keep kind of running away. If you run to the bottom right, it'll actually uh, despawn them. So if we go over here, uh, we should hopefully see a Shellos first try. Uh, unfortunately, not first try, but it's really easy to set them. We just go right over here. Make sure you already battled that guy if you didn't already, though. I think it's actually required even pass. And basically, just keep doing this until we find a Shellos. Uh, normally, it should spawn it a few times. Kind of surprised it hasn't yet. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here we have a double Shellos. Oh, uh, you actually want to save in front of the Shellos. The main reason for this is because you want to know what their uh, value is. So let's go and uh, go directly into the Shellos. And uh, the main reason for this is if you find a zero attack that you actually want, uh, saving in front of it will allow you to catch it in any ball you want. So uh, let's say you want to breed it. Who knows? Maybe even in a dream ball if you want it in a love ball. Whatever you want it in, uh, you can end up doing. Obviously, we did it in lore ball specifically. Uh, right here, uh, we're just going to quick ball. It should go in. It catches a lot easier than ditto. So it's going to quick ball this thing. That should guarantee go in. And then we have ourselves a Shellos. Uh, as you saw, it only took us six tries. It's actually a 1 in 32 to be able to go and uh, end up getting it. So let's go over to this other Shellos then. And what we could do if either of these two were correct... Which I might do for the sake of this video if uh, we actually do get one of these correct. Because I believe we threw a save right there. We should have. Um, so we'll go. I always forget when I save. I normally save like a billion and a half times like every few seconds. Just to make sure. So these should go down quick ball very easy first try. Every single one. Alright. So we got those. Now next. Let's go and check them. So to check them, we will go to our Pokemon. And now this one's a lot easier to check. You just have to see if it has zero attack. So as you can see in these two, they do not have zero attack. However, you would repeat this process until you eventually find a zero attack one. If you have saved in front of it, you can then restart your game after you've caught in it and check to see if it has zero attack and then go and catch it in any ball you want. Uh, keep in mind, it is not required to end up getting a zero attack one here. You could just, you know, bring it over from a ditto, the stat. However, it's nice just to already have it. It's a 1 in 32 chance. It's not that big of a deal to uh, go out and farm them. They catch like quick ball like nearly 100%, if not 100% every single time. So they're very easy just to get a bunch of them very quick. Have it in like not even 10, 20 minutes. And then you go and start breeding with it. So now we would go into the breeding process. So for the breeding process, we're not going to be showing a bunch of uh, egg openings here. But just kind of explaining uh, what would need to have what as we're going through every single one of the generations. So of course there are two places that where you can go and breed in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, one of them is over here in Bridgefield. The other one is over here next to the uh, Route 5 uh, Nursery. I personally prefer using the Bridgefield one and that is the one we shall be using uh, right over here. So uh, of course uh, the Egg Lady, every single time you talk to her after running for a little while, she will end up giving you an egg. Uh, we do not necessarily want this egg right now, as we're not actually hatching any of them. We're just going to be kind of going over the generations. Uh, of course, you can end up giving her two specific Pokemon, and I will be showing every single one that we ended up doing for the initial process. So when we went and uh, go and got our Ditto, um, the Ditto that we ended up ultimately getting was not this one. <laughs> wait, where's the one that we ended up doing for the first? Oh, wait, was this the one for the first? No, this was, sorry. This was the one that we ended up doing for the first breed, as it has the eight IV. So what we want to make sure we end up having here uh, for the very first one. Oh, wait, why do I have it on you? That should be on you. So uh, what we ended up doing for the very first one is going for a uh, Destiny Knot on uh, this thing. The one that we ended up getting from the um, from the cave. And then the speed ditto that we had, AIV speed ditto, the one that's really specifically needs to have uh, the 60 if it's negative, the 67 if it's neutral, and the uh, 73 plus if it, or 73 if it is uh, the plus version. Um, but this one is the neutral 67. So we need to go make sure we always keep this anklet on it. Uh, this anklet has the ability to um, end up uh, keeping one of the stats. So this one's specifically doing speed. As far as where you get this thing, 
Uh, this is actually from the... Because it's one of the few that some people might not have laying around. Uh, it's one of the BP shops. It's either here or the other way. Yeah, it's over here. So if we go over to here real quick, uh, there should be a BP shop right over here that ends up selling it. I believe it sells Destiny not too, but you can get in Crabomatic for a little bit easier. Uh, which reminds me, I don't think I have a tab open for Crabomatic, though I don't think we actually need it for anything in this video now that I think about it. Um, however, um, yeah, you can end up getting the anklets here. They each end up... Oh, you can also get Destiny not here for pretty cheap. Um, but yeah, these just maintain one of the stats. This one specifically is for speed and is the only one that we're going to be using. The main reason for this is on a level one, you can't just look at it and be like, oh, that's an eight speed ditto. That's a six speed ditto. That's a 10 speed ditto, a nine, a 11. Uh, Decent has a very wide range and they all look very, very similar. So you always have to be breeding the speed stats uh, when you need a weird speed stat like this with a um, with the maintain. Because it's a lot easier when it's zero, because it says no good. You know for sure it's zero, because it literally says no good right there. It says it's zero, uh, just in a word instead of the actual number. Whereas decent is a very wide range. Like, that HP stat is different than that attack stat, which is different from then the defense stat, which is different than that speed stat. I think the exact range is like 1 to 15, I just forgot off the top of my head. However, it's a very, very wide range. And just because it says decent does not mean it has the correct stat, as we've seen with these different dittos that have a different speed than the uh, other one that we have here. This is a 68, that is a 67. Anyways, so let's go and um, go through the process. So, um, well, I guess technically we don't need to actually be in that location because I'm not actually breeding any of them. So you'd go over to one of the breeders, and now uh, we're going to want to initially have on our 8-speed ditto, maintain that speed. Every single time you have to maintain the speed. doesn't matter which one of the two is on, it has to be on one of them. So right here, uh, the initial breed that we ended up doing is put in 8 IV speed ditto, put in the uh, gastrodon that we ended up having, and then boom, we will have ourselves our first generation here. So uh, now we have ourselves a uh, one that has three stats correct. Its speed is now correct. Since we brought over that speed from the other ditto, um, it, this now has the speed on gastrodon. So one thing that we can end up doing is actually moving that over. Uh, so here we actually ended up doing this now uh, for this next one with this on you. And the speed now moved over to the Gastrodon. As we move the speed over 100% of the time uh, with that item, uh, which now has moved over the, to the Gastrodon. So now we can start doing that with a better ditto. Uh, in most situations, if you already had a better ditto, you'd start immediately breeding it with a no good uh, 6 IV uh, ditto. Uh, however, uh, this is from a more from scratch method. Oh, also, how we got this one uh, better ditto, you see has four IVs. Uh, you can end up getting some three IVs from the Radiant ones. However, you just throw a bunch of shards into a Raid Den. It'll eventually end up giving you a Light Beam. And once you find a five-star one, uh, you basically just took the first five-star one that you could have possibly found. And that's basically what we took here. However, you could very easily do it just with the bases that you found, trying to get your uh, exact speed uh, ditto. And uh, most people who are breeding a bunch probably already have a bunch of breeding dittos around. So you probably don't even need to go through most of the ditto process other than getting the initial eight-speed one that we ended up doing. Anyways, so... As far as our next uh, thing here, so we have um, the first generation. So this is our first generation that's basically breeding then after we've gotten our uh, initial two set up from scratch. So this is just the random first ditto that we found in the den uh, combined with the ditto that we guaranteed got the speed on. And as you saw, uh, we also got the attack on. The attack was not guaranteed. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, three IVs move over when you breed them without Destiny Out, whereas it's five with it. However, we guaranteed the speed and, they, uh, and the other one had uh, no good. Uh, for the attack so we were basically just hoping it would roll to no good as you see here only two of them actually got the no good uh but that's well, we only need one so <laughs> we end up getting it there so this was the first generation that basically ended up breeding after that initial i guess you could technically consider gen 2 but uh realistically it's it, it's the first generation so here we have the uh, gen 1 and these two end up breeding with each other then we ended up having ourselves uh these outputs so with this we ended up getting a few more uh better values and uh, we basically just took one of the dittos that we had earlier, trying to see if we could fix up the IVs. This isn't as important, but I was trying to fix them up a little bit. Um, this step could have technically have been skipped a little bit, but uh, I, I do like trying to get as many as we possibly can. And if you already had a six IV ditto, that'd be way, way easier. So in this case, we basically just did the same process again. Um, we just took the third ditto here and uh, just ended up using one of the ones that we found while we were trying to get the eight IV speed one. Though, of course, normally you just use a six IV one and you'd be good to go. However, we were trying to do it for stats that we didn't already have. So over here, as you can see, we didn't have HP. So this one has HP. Uh, we didn't have special attack. So this one has special attack. So the hope was that uh, this would have maintained the HP. Uh, basically, we wanted the ditto to do the HP and special attack. So it would fix those two values while maintaining the no good attack, the best defense, 
and the uh, special defense, and the speed is already guaranteed. Unfortunately, that didn't quite happen on the next generation. However, what did happen on the next generation is we found the correct nature, calm nature. So this ends up making your attack go down, your special defense go up. This is the exact one that we saw over here. Uh, if we go over to the thing, it ends up saying a calm uh, nature. And uh, we can end up seeing that if you don't know which one that is, because I know I for sure do not have all of them memorized. Uh, but if you're wondering which one uh, that ever is, it actually tells you in the menu. So if we go and uh, click over here and click uh, check summary, we can end up seeing ourselves a, um, which page is it? This one right over here. Uh, sorry, not that one, this one. So you can end up seeing right there, this Pokemon is pretty calm. That's what we're looking for, calm nature. Um, and we can see that right there just by checking the st stats thing too. Uh, there's also a search option for it, which makes it uh, very easy. If we go end up clicking over here and then clicking on the nature and then clicking over to calm, we can end up seeing the exact uh, nature that we're looking for here. Boom, calm. There we go. And if we end up clicking uh, search then, uh, it'll show every single one that now has the uh, calm nature. Anyways, uh, let's go back and uh, go over the next generation. So now we're breeding uh, these two. So uh, unfortunately, we are going to have to give up some IVs here because even though we've been using Destiny Knot this whole time, uh, we are finally got the correct nature. So we're going to go maintain the speed and then go maintain the nature. Uh, you'd normally, if you were going to do it kind of like this, you'd want to, you know, have it already be like pretty much perfect. Uh, however, in this case, this will be good enough to make it battle ready once we get it to level 100. And that was the main thing that we we're looking for. This immediately gets something by Gen 4 that was uh, battle ready. Could have probably even done it by Gen 3 if we would have found this one generation earlier, uh, the correct nature. And then the result that basically ended up happening is three battle ready um, Shellosses. So every single one of these can become the one that was used in the World Championship. And this whole process right here uh, takes only uh, 30 minutes or so to get to the four generations to end up getting to this point. Uh, of course, you have to go get the initial catches. But once you've already gotten your base, um, which is basically this guy, uh, a pretty bad base, but still based on the lessons, we had to get it from scratch. Uh, it still allows you to get it pretty quickly. So now we have three um, ones that once to a level 100 can be completely battle ready. So as you can see right over here, he has the uh, best uh, stats for HP, defense, special attack, and uh, special defense. And the only two that needed to be special was the attack stat and the speed, where the speed ended up being a um, 8, and the attack ended up being a no good. If we end up going to the stats page uh, right over here, we can end up seeing the exact uh, breakdown as well. So if we go over to our stats, we can end up seeing the full stats. And unless I did something wrong, this sh should be the exact same stats as this. So one way we can actually check this is Pokemon Showdown. If we go and make a level 100 Gastrodon, which this is, we can compare it and give it all the same stats as was on the other page. So all these stats, if we did everything correctly, should be aligned. So it is a 400 and actually, let me move this over real quick because it'll probably be a little bit easier to see if we do this. So as you can see right over here, uh, we needed the, um, so we needed the HP to be 408, which it is. We needed the attack to be 153, which it is. We needed the defense to be 195, which it is. Uh, we need the special attack to be 243, which of course it is. And uh, we needed the special defense to be 259. And of course that very weird eight speed IV for the 91 speed so that it can uh, outspeed other really specific things depending on uh, what it needs to do, uh, depending on if it's trick room or um, if you're throwing icy winds and all that. So there we go. We now have ourselves a perfect one. Uh, you may have noticed we didn't, of course, throw all the things on it right now. However, that's what we're about to go do right now. So let's go do the uh, other process. So uh, this is just the initial process. Uh, if you did not care about like cleaning it up and having like really specific like uh, redoing the breeding output on your base or anything like that, you can just end here. You already have your um, Pokemon. It's ready to go. It's good to go. You don't need to do any kind of other weird shenanigans to it. It just simply is ready. So uh, what we're actually going to be doing, though, is going and uh, doing a little bit of a different uh, thing right over here. So first, how should we go about this? So first, what we want to go do is, uh, of course, I later ended up Masuda methoding and trying to find a bunch of these. And the result that ended up occurring was 30 total uh, shellos that are all ready to be cleaned up. And I kept two of them in eggs so that we could catch them in the... Oh, I forgot. I don't even have the screen. Sorry. <laughs> we don't have the screen uh, showing. So basically, we're going to go and get um, two completely from scratch uh, battle-ready um, shellises that we already ended up breeding earlier. So these two uh, were done through Masuda method so that we could do it with a better ditto. So these two weren't from scratch. All of these weren't from scratch, but the initial process was, which we ended up doing for the initial base. But anyways... 
basically, we have two whole boxes of correct uh, shellos. These are correct in that they're all 6 IV, but have incorrect nature. These are correct in that they all have uh, correct nature and 5 IV, but they're missing their final IV. And right here, they're also missing their um, hidden ability, or not hidden ability, they're missing, it's not a hidden ability, but they're missing their other ability, but these are really easy to do with ability capsule. Unfortunately, getting their hidden ability, a lot harder. However, this doesn't need hidden ability. If you just need the other ability, it's super, super quick to switch. And uh, we mostly got it in Storm Drain anyway, so we didn't even need to really worry about that. But yeah, these are both only one step off from being correct. So what we're gonna do real quick now is go and um, hatch these. So these are two eggs that should just be like a few steps off from being uh, good to go. We're just gonna move these out of our inventory and we're actually gonna hatch these at the path to the peak. Now, the main reason for this is the uh, world champion actually ended up doing it at the path to the peak. As we can see over here, uh, I spent the entire tournament in the path to the peak with Mudsdale out, um, as you can see in the fourth pick, which is what he ended up doing over here. So I figured it would be cool if he ended up going and uh, hatching them there. So you might be wondering how do we already have two eggs that we know for sure are correct. Uh, the main reason for this is you can end up throwing down a save uh, beforehand. So basically, if you go and get an egg from the uh, breeder and then go and save uh, with all your eggs that you have and then hatch them, you will now know what the eggs are and then have a save prior to it. And they're always going to be the same data every single time. So what you end up doing then is going and uh, unsaving, you know, exiting out of the game. And then once you end up coming back, you will be able to go and basically um, already know what their value is. So right now we're at the path to the peak. So we can now go and open our eggs. So let's go and put our two eggs into our uh, inventory here. Uh, let's see, oops, wrong thing. Uh, let me go and grab the uh, eggs over here. So we'll go grab egg number one. I'm not sure exactly how many steps these are off. I believe one of them should be near instant. The other one might take a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean like several seconds <laughs> rather than literal instantly. But let's go hatch our two eggs. And now what we're going to go do is the cleanup process. So, of course, you saw when we did the other one, we didn't go through, like, the whole process of um, getting them the held item, getting them their IVs, or sorry, their EVs. Uh, IVs are already done when we were doing this breeding process. However, EVs are um, something you actually have to go give to every single one of those individual stats. Uh, we also ended up having, the, oh gosh, this one does have a few steps. Okay, it shouldn't be too many steps. Uh, this one was pretty close to breeding. It just wasn't near instant. Probably should have gotten it near instant, but um, it was the first one in the party. So uh, I didn't want to, like, mix, miss what the egg was or mix it up. So the save wasn't, like, directly on top of it. But here we go. Uh, these should now both have a uh, hatch location of Path to the Peak, uh, being the exact same as where the champion was when he ended up winning uh, VGC 2022. So now if we go and check our Pokemon right over here, uh, we now have ourselves, oh, male and female as well. Uh, so these are both um, one step off. Uh, one of them is uh, only incorrect in nature, which this one is. And this one is only incorrect in its um, in its um, IVs. So these are both two completely different uh, setups that we ended up having to do. Two ended up getting these fully battle ready. So first, let's do the, let's do the, I guess, the one you would normally want to clean up is this one. So let's do this one first. So this one's the 6 IV one, which is born uh, with 6 IVs. I always like uh, marking them off so we know. So this is um, that. Okay, so we have a 6 IV. We have our best for these four, and then the two that need to be uh, no good or something different. Um, normally, I just have them no good, obviously, but this is a weird case where 8 is actually the correct speed. So we're just simply going to mark that with a red one. Uh, normally, it would be a 0 speed in many situations, um, but for this one, it is a very weird 8. And now we're going to go get this thing battle ready. So this one, we actually don't need to get that high of a level. Uh, as you can see, he already has uh, his um, six IVs. So you don't need to get it to level 100. So this guy is normally what you want to do as XP candy is a little bit harder than a mint more often than not, especially if you're already playing um, a bunch of things that already give BP, like making master rank in a few hours and stuff like that. Uh, so let's go and clean this guy up. So the first thing we're going to go check is how much XP does this guy need to have his moveset? So if we go over to, if it would help if I bring it up on screen, if, if we go over to the uh, Gastrodon page over here, we're on um, Pokemon database right now. So as far as Pokemon database, uh, one thing that we can actually check is if we go over to the uh, moveset for our Gastrodon and click it over to Sword and Shield, 
<clears throat> we can end up seeing the level that it ends up getting Earth Power, which is the only move that it needs from level up uh, that is its highest level. So it is a level 39. We can then go to a website to double check what it's... Uh, also, Coromon, great game, by the way. Um, we can actually end up going and checking its um, experience. Uh, you do not need to know all the nitty-gritty of all this mess, as I am pretty sure almost no one knows all the nitty-gritty of whatever on Earth this formula is. What on Earth am I looking at? Anyways, this chart tells you everything. So what we need to know is what speed uh, table... Uh, our uh, Gashardon is. If we go back to uh, Pokemon DB, we can now go and check right over here what our speed stat is. So if we go here, we can see the growth rate is medium fast. So now we go check the medium fast uh, column here, which is marked in yellow. Uh, the level that we ended up needing, as we saw from the other thing over here, was level 39. So if we go check now over to 39, we can end up seeing the exact amount of XP that we need. So if we go look at yellow and 39, we can see we need 59,319 XP. Based on how XP candy is in the game, you can either use six um, large ones or two extra larges, which is exactly what we're going to go do here. So let's go into our bag and go over to our uh, candy. I won't be showing how to farm candy in this video. Uh, we actually did a stream on it the other day. I basically, uh, most of the candy I have, I actually do off of uh, trying to get dream balls, which is how we have all those dream balls. Uh, I actually do it off of um, hosting off my other Switch. I host uh, Deli Bird, uh, which has a 3% chance to end up giving you a dream ball and gives you more candy than you're ever going to know what to do with. Okay, so let's go and uh, this, that's what we're doing for this video, using some of that candy. So let's go get him to level 6. I didn't actually test this beforehand, but this should be the exact level that we need to have Earth Power. It's also going to try to give us a billion other moves that we do not need. Um, so let's go click through that. And this should indeed give us somewhere in here Earth Power and all of the very annoyingness that this is. Instead of just giving us all of our moves, it'll bring up a billion windows. Hopefully this will not be the case. It was much better in Legends Arceus. Hopefully next gen and Scarlet and Violet will fix this as well. Because gosh, why on earth are you showing me this much useless information? Uh, okay, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Earth Power! The only thing we're here for. Yes. Um, so we're going to go get a Earth Power here. Okay. So we're going to do this. Oh, also, I didn't mention the yawn thing yet. I actually forgot this when I initially did the breeding as well, which is what you saw with that one thing over there. So um, I actually forgot to mention this, and I, it, it's kind of um, thematic because I actually forgot to do it initially too when I was breeding them uh, because the yawn is an egg move. It's actually the only move that is not TM or naturally learnt from this thing. Uh, so you do have to go a little bit out of your way for it. And by a little bit out of your way, I mean a very, very little bit. So basically, um, one of the best breeding partners for uh, getting Yon. So we might as well do that next since we did the Earth Power. So now uh, this thing is uh, good to go in its level. It actually does not need to be any higher level than what it is right now. So if we go now over to um, get our next one. So we need Yon. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do this for this egg group is actually the Quagsire, or whatever his name is, um, which is right over here, who's getting a new form next generation, which is pretty cool. However, uh, as far as his uh, breeding group is concerned, this generation, uh, there should be one right over here. Most weathers have him just laying around. He's probably even in this first... Oh, uh, there, there he is. So uh, this is what we're looking for. He gains Yawn as a level up. Um, so that's what we're uh, looking for. We can actually end up seeing if we bring down the egg groups over here. Uh, we can... Oh, sorry, I don't have it up. Uh, if we bring up the egg groups right over here, we can end up seeing that Yawn... Uh, these are all the compatible things that our Gashardon can end up uh, doing it on. Uh, we're still on Pokemon DB for this. Uh, you can actually click on it over here. If you just click uh, Egg Moves, boom, it brings you to the Egg Move uh, page, which is what we're on right over here. And uh, as you can see here, here are all the compatible things that you can end up doing it with. And the easiest one to end up doing it with is a Wooper or Quagsires. They're generally just chilling over here. And uh, when you catch them at level 60, they're already going to have their Yawn. So we're just going to... Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't actually catch. I need to... Oh, okay. So this is an instance where you accidentally get uh, IVs. Uh, which is a little bit annoying. I wish you could lock IV so you don't accidentally get IVs. If you ever accidentally do this, which is... Oh, that's going to be... Well, then again. Well, we're going to have two of them with incorrect IVs, but there's a very quick way to go fix this. If nothing else, I guess that guy has a little bit of his level. But uh, I always forget about that. I do that so often. Just completely forget uh, the IV thing. So we are going to clean that up. No worries. If nothing else, we can actually show the process for doing so uh, in case you accidentally ever do, which um, it, it does occasionally happen. <laughs> It does ever so occasionally happen. So with this Quagsire, he knows Yawn. So the process for giving this Yawn to one of them is you just put both of them in the daycare. Um, or actually, sorry, you first need to go and uh, breed this with a... So first what you would have to do is you go to this guy. You need to make sure he has the move Yawn. So let's go do that right now. So if we go over to uh, Town Map, we now want to go to any of the uh, places uh, where we can end up changing out their uh, moveset. 
and make sure that one of his moves is yawn. Doesn't really matter what the rest of it is, it just matters that one of them is indeed a yawn. So let's go do that real quick. So let's go uh, right over here. We go over to uh, this little guy, and he will help us go remember a move, and one of these moves should be yawn. So we go over to Quagsire, we tell it to uh, please give us yawn. Uh, let's see, there we go. And now we just replace literally any move with yawn, doesn't matter which. So now it has yawn. So now with this thing with yawn, we would go and find the... Oh yeah, we would need to have a male of this, by the way. Uh, is Are you male? It is actually female, so we would have to keep catching it until we find a female one. So let's just do it based on the previous one we got, because I'm not going to try getting a male one right now. It could take a couple catches before we finally get one. Uh, but it has to be a male. Basically, uh, let me just explain it at this point. So what we ended up doing was finding a male Quagsire. You then take your female... Um, um, Shellos doesn't really matter which, it could literally be any stats, I'd even preserve the correct ones. Uh, it doesn't matter what the stats are. So basically, you just take any of what you're breeding, uh, you, in female, has to be female. Uh, then you take the, uh, male of the thing that you want the egg move from, uh, then they hatch a little baby, and then boom, that baby, which is this baby right here, ends up having a yawn. So if we check over here, boom, we now have yawn. Now what you do with this is you put the two that you want, uh, to have the yawn together. So we just put literally any shellos, doesn't matter if it's male or female, into the daycare with the one that has the yawn move. Make sure the one that's in the daycare has at least one move uh, empty so that you can end up getting the yawn. And then boom, we will have ourselves a yawn on whatever we want. Um, so it doesn't actually matter what the stats is, doesn't matter what the gender of the other thing is, it'll just carry it over and will result in the other thing having a yawn. As this one did not actually breed with the yawn, but I just gave it through just putting them both in a daycare and then boom, it got yawn. Um, pretty short process, you put them both in there. Takes like a few minutes, just walk around a little bit. About as long as like an egg takes or so. Uh, anyways, so uh, one thing that you want to be careful with when breeding is accidentally giving incorrect IV. So as you saw there, we ended up getting a Quagsire. So really easy fix is we go click on Quagsire and check what his um, stat is that he gives. So whenever you kill a Quagsire, you will end up getting, I forget where it is on this page, 2 HP. So we could just remember this. However, there is a much easier way uh, just to make sure that we don't accidentally um, do anything incorrectly when we're going and giving it the rest of the stats is we want to go cancel out that 2 HP. So if we go into our bag and go over to our berries, we can simply go and replace out this 2 HP. So let's go over to the berry that lowers your HP, which is called the Palm Egg Berry. Uh, as far as where you get this, you can end up getting it. I, I normally get it from um, Mint Island. We're actually going to be going to Mint Island in a little bit. So um, you can end up getting it there. So we'll be showing that in a little bit actually where to get it, but we'll simply use this on both of them. And that now will cancel out our two IVs that we accidentally end up giving them to four HP. Even though they want HP, we want a really specific HP value on them, which is not that. So let's go and actually start doing that process. So let's now that they are clean base, uh, one other way that you can do a clean base is like a little island over there, but I normally just do in the berries, but I should go show the little island as well uh, for any of you that are curious. Let's say you accidentally gave like a lot of incorrect IVs to a Pokemon uh, that was supposed to be for something else. Uh, the easiest way to go and fix them if you don't have a bunch of berries around is with 10 Armorite. There's actually an island that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we actually passed going over to uh, Ditto Islands, which I didn't really make mention of at the time. However, uh, it's a little bit shorter than where Ditto Island is. Actually, I don't normally go to it. I think it's the island to the left, even though there's an island right there. I believe it's actually a little bit closer to the left. But maybe I should check it just in case because I don't normally use this island. Uh, yeah, it's right here, if I'm not mistaken. Because I normally just use the berries if I want to go and do it. Because normally you only need to do it to like one or two stats very quickly. Very rarely do you have to reset the entire thing. I'd rather just breed another one from uh, scratch or, you know, breed it from the uh, bases than to bother doing that. But yeah, if you talk to this lady, she will go for 10 Armorite. Go and completely reset the base stats of any one Pokemon that you want. Um, but yeah, we're not going to be doing that right now. But that's the other way that you could do it if you have to fix a lot of stats on something. Like, let's say you accidentally used it for like 10 minutes, gave it a bunch of stats that you have no clue what. Uh, then, yeah, you probably just want to wipe it clean and uh, make sure you have a nice clean slate. Uh, to end up giving them their IVs for. So let's go do the IV process now. So if we go end up bringing out the IVs, we can end up seeing the full IV spread for this uh, Gastrodon. It is a 180 HP, which is one of the reasons why I definitely wanted to be at zero, because uh, there's a very specific way to get to 180. Then we want 92 uh, defense, 92 special attack, and 144 special defense. I have this up on my other computer so I can end up seeing it here. And now let's go over to uh, actually do those. So let's go start with um, where to get the very weird stats. So of course, every Pokemon in the game, when you end up killing them, gives you a little bit of IVs. However, there is a much, much, much easier way to end up doing this. So if we go over to here, actually, is it slightly quicker to do it from here? I think it might actually be slightly quicker from here. I normally do it from the other location, 
because I grab a few other things along the way. But now that I think of it, it is probably quicker actually going this way. So if we go over to this little island area, uh, next to pretty much every single rock in um, in this area, uh, you will end up finding feathers. And these feathers give you uh, stats, exactly one IV towards the stat. And these are normally the easiest way if you ever need to get a really weird IV build. Let's say you need something with like 96 IV or 98, 99. Oh, I just assume it would never be 99, but uh, because I believe they go by fours, if I'm not mistaken. So you never need that, but you know. Uh, let's say you need like a 98, 92, like we need in this situation. Any kind of number that isn't divisible by 10, you're going to likely need these feathers as it's a very easy way to clean them up. Wait, do I already have them taken for today? I shouldn't. Why are they not here? There we go. I was going to say, where are all the feathers at? So we should see a bunch of shiny things. Uh, the exact amount of feathers, I believe it's two dozen. If you don't miss a single one, I believe there's 24 around these rocks. Um, so you just kind of gather these, um, like, you know, whenever you feel like you need more. Um, this is like one of the dailies in the game that you can kind of do. Uh, you can reset for this too, but you have to restart your game. I I'm trying to do this without any glitches, uh, but you can do like day skip and uh, keep getting like all the feathers you ever need. But realistically, just doing this for like a week, um, you know, seven days over a week, you probably have more feathers than you're realistically going to need. Because most builds end up going for um, pure um, similar or similarity. Like, you know, you go 252, 252, 4. Like, how that uh, Calyrex is built is generally how you build, like, 98% of your Pokemon. Uh, very rarely is it more like the Gastron where you're calculating out in a calculator for hours, maybe days, maybe weeks. Like, literally every possible best pos combination you could get. Normally, it's like the Calyrex where, boom, you just throw a bunch into one stat, a bunch into another stat throw one into the other stat, boom, you're good to go. Very rarely are you doing like, uh, especially on a more casual or just like normal ranked level, you're generally not building anything as complex as this Gastrodon normally, but that's what these feathers are for. So let's go around all three of these rocks. Uh, every single rock in this area has a bunch of these. These are just the best location as the sheer amount of them is very high if you're ever just looking for a good amount. Also, I'm playing this off of not the actual game, but the replay on my uh, computer. So it has like a one second delay if you're wondering why I am missing these things so absurdly bad. But yeah, you get about a 24 from these if you grab every single one around these three rocks and every rock around here does have a bunch of them around it. Anyways, so these feathers will now allow us to go give us those little bit of stats that we need. So let's go give our Gastrodon um, everything it needs for IVs. Why on earth am I in this menu? So I want to go into my bag right now. So if we go over to bag, we can now start giving the individual values. So first things first, and these are the values that we end up seeing on this. So the, or sorry, EVs, not IVs, uh, which are 180 HP, 92 defense, uh, 92 special attack, and 144 special defense. And we're going to do it in that order as it is actually the most convenient way to distribute those stats. I'm not sure if it's written in that way for that reason, or just because that's the way that it comes out. I'm pretty sure that's just the way it comes out. However, that's also the way that is most efficient to end up doing it in this particular situation. And the reason for that is because of 144 special defense. So we'll get to that when we get to that. So first, 180 HP. So basically, we're just going to buy a bunch of pills. If you don't know where to get pills already, if you just give a bunch of watts to the watt lady, I think it's like 500,000 or a million, I can't remember. But uh, basically, she'll end up giving you um, eventually the um, the pill machines. And these are 50% cheaper than buying them in the end game area. You can just get them in the end game area. Once you have a lot of them, you tend to just do it that way. But you basically just give her a bunch of watts. She's very watt hungry. And uh, she'll eventually give you these machines. It's either 500,000 or a million. I can't remember. And uh, here you can buy all of them at a discount when you buy them 25 at once. It is 50% cheaper than doing it through um, the actual shop. Uh, you do this until you get to about 900 or so, and then you just buy the rest from the shop, as is more convenient uh, when you reach that value. But basically, you get all your pills there, and now we can start uh, pilling up our uh, Gastrodon. So if we go now over to our uh, candies, uh, we can now go over to HP and simply go and give it the needed stat. Uh, we need 18. Each one of these pills gives 10 at a time. The feathers give 1. So basically, at this point, it's just giving all the values that we need. So that is an HP of 18, and uh, we already reset the HP earlier, so we know for sure it is now at 180. Next, we need to go do defense. So right here, we just go straight down to the uh, defense one, and we go and give this to you. Uh, we now go and end up going for um, a 9, because we need to do the other two off of feathers. And there we go. We now have the defense to 9D. However, uh, we still need to go now and fix up the other stat, special attack. So let me go get the special attack and now give it nine. And now this is where we want to stop uh, for one second because we have two weird values. We now have 90 on our defense and special attack. However, we need 92. And guess what we do for that? We got feathers. So these feathers give one each as we were explaining earlier. And we need two defense, which we'll do with these feathers. And then we ended up needing um, two uh, special attack. So we'll end up putting these feathers into there. And then boom, there we go. 
we now have all of those other stats uh, correct. The only stat that we do not have now is special defense. And guess what? Now that we have done the maximum amount of points, all we have to do is just spam the very last pill. So uh, now that the other two are correct, or all the other values are correct, uh, we're going to do 15, and this is going to give us 144 uh, due to the cap. And now we should have ourselves, if we did this correctly, uh, which we'll be able to see a little bit easier on the other one because it'll be level 100, a little bit harder to tell on a level uh, 39. However, this one is now uh, about already as far as its stats are concerned. It uh, now has a oh, moveset we still have to go do. But now its stats are correct. Uh, keep in mind, it is a level 39, but everything scales automatically to level 50. So as long as all of these, uh, as long as the IVs are correct and the EVs are correct, you're good to go in that regard. However, we still have a few things we need to go and finish up on this thing. As you saw over there, uh, we do not have the uh, moveset uh, finished for this guy. So we need to go and do the uh, moveset then. So let's go over to our bag and uh, do the moveset. Luckily, everything but Yan, which is the most annoying thing, um, is simply just ATM. So we just go through every single one of the moves that it needs. Of course, the moves that it ends up needing here is Earth Power, Icy Wind, uh, Yawn, and Protect. So let's go and do each one of those. So we now need ourselves a Earth Power. Actually, I should probably do this in alphabetical order. That actually is alphabetical. Wait, it's actually positioned in alphabetical order. How convenient. Uh, anyways, Earth Power we already have. So let's do Icy Wind next. And every single one of these is infinite use. Uh, as far as their locations, I have no clue. You only have to get them once. Uh, however, uh, there are guides out there for uh, specifically where all the TMs are. If you don't already have every single one of them, I will not be showing them in this video as uh, I have no clue where a single one of them are. Because once you just grab them for the first time, you kind of care don't care they even exist. <laughs> After you get them for the very first time. Anyways, uh, we want Icy Wind. We want Protect. Uh, pretty standard, just infinite use uh, TMs here. And uh, don't even have any that are consumable here. So very convenient. And uh, there we go. Also, while we're doing this, we should probably go clean up the other one, just so we don't have to do this again when we're uh, doing the other little guy, because we are going to be showing it for the other little guy as well. And um, we don't want to have to go through the whole process again. So let's go do that. So let's give this guy protect as well. He should already have his yawn. Uh, he shouldn't have his earth power, though. Um, so he does have his yawn. We'll give him his protect. And then the only other thing we need to go give him then is that icy wind, which I should have done in the earlier one. Didn't have the foresight for it. However, we have the foresight for it now. So let's go do that real quick. Just so we don't have to come back into this menu again uh, a little bit later this video when we go clean up this other guy. So now we'll go to this and uh, we'll give him a uh, icy wind right uh, there because our power will be the first slot then. And there we go. So now uh, the only last thing we really need to do uh, is give it um, two optional things. Both of these are pretty optional as they are very, very rarely ever going to be used. However, they are still worth potentially considering. So in Sword and Shield, there's, of course, the Dynamax feature. Uh, this is a feature that competitively pretty much isn't viable anymore because, you know, there isn't any more like major competitions for uh, Dynamax. However, um, it's still a thing that is existing in this game. So you can give it 10 Dynamax candy. Uh, you're almost never, ever, ever uh, Dynamaxing a Gastrodon. There's a few other ones that you can ever so occasionally end up Dynamaxing. Um, because you end up needing set like a certain terrain to counter sleep or something similar. However, for the most part, there's almost no situation unless you're doing a last ditch desperation effort in which you'll be uh, Dynamaxing your Gastrodon. However, that one in like 1000 chance that you might actually be doing it, might as well give it the candy. Next is all the PPs. These are pretty optional as very rarely are you going to get into a fight where you're going to end up needing these. Um, the main ways that you get them, there are three ways to get PPs in this game. Um, the first two do not require a glitch. The third one does, where you just kind of keep skipping forward, uh, which is where, why we have like 999 of these. Um, however, there are three methods to get them. One is the Cram-O-Matic, um, where you put a bunch of value in and you end up getting a PP up. Um, you can do this also by putting Armorite or um, the other one, the... Um, Gosh, Dynite. Either Armorite or Dynite, Dynite in there and ends up giving you PP up. Uh, but you can also do it through other recipes. Um, the second method is the one uh, that I like, uh, though not where most of these came from. The Deli Bird method, because you get a bunch of XP candy, a bunch of other good loot, bottle caps, all that good stuff. Uh, but it also drops PP ups, PP maxes. Uh, but the best method is to do the lottery method. So you can check the lottery thing every single day. If you just fill your boxes with different ID Pokemon, um, you'll have over a 50% chance to get a PP max every single time you check it. And you can check that either every single day, or if you don't mind using glitches, you can skip forward a single day over and over and over again and get yourself 999 PP maxes and 999 PP ups. But basically, we're just going to spam a bunch of PP ups here and get every single one of these stats to as high as they could possibly be. This is pretty optional, as very, very rarely are you going to need this many in a given battle. However, Gastrodon is very stally because of how... Um, um, how um, Leftovers works with, like, Protect Yawn. So there are some rare situations where you might actually want this many. So uh, worth considering. Uh, it is definitely one of those Pokemon that would benefit a little bit more from having them up rather than not up. 
but uh, realistically I'm pretty sure that didn't come down a single time in the actual tournament and is a very rare situation to actually occur. However, this thing is now battle ready. Uh, the only thing we need to go give this thing is uh, leftovers. So uh, let's go over uh, how to do leftovers then because um, leftovers is the held item and you might not have a lot of spare leftovers. A lot of things need leftovers. It's a really good option. So let's go show how to get the leftovers from scratch. And before I accidentally incorrectly do it again, I am putting the Shellos in a box before I accidentally give him incorrect IVs. However, for the one we currently have, it actually does not matter because he is now maxed out on IVs, so we don't need to worry about him randomly getting an IV. Uh, both of these are completely maxed, so you're never going to be in a situation where um, you're going to get ones you don't need because, well, it already has everything that it does need. However, this guy doesn't yet, so we'll be working on him in a moment. However, let's go and show the very last step, and that is getting leftovers. Let's say you have zero leftovers right now. You don't have a single one in your pocket. You want some. Um, you want to go put it on a bunch of different Pokemon, uh, just so you don't have to keep switching your leftovers from Pokemon to Pokemon. So in this game, uh, you can end up getting it over here in, uh, right actually to the left of daycare, right over the bridge. Uh, that you would have to have done when you're going through the storyline. Normally I believe Snorlax uh, spawns over there. However, around that area, you will also find a bunch of Munchlax. Uh, they have a 5% spawn, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, uh, also, uh, we do want one other thing. Um, I actually want to go bring that other setup out real quick. So one thing that we actually want here is I need the... Where'd it go? Problem is I forget what box I put him in. So we want something with compound eyes in our first slot. Uh, the main reason for this is it increases the chance of getting a uh, held item on the enemy uh, when we end up uh, finding it. So uh, we mostly just want to make sure, pretty much guarantee his leftover. I can't remember the exact odds for it, but I believe it's almost 100% if you end up having compound eyes. Otherwise, I think you might have to find like two or three of these, whereas the very first one should hopefully give it. I think it moves it from like a 50-ish percent to 75 or something like that. I don't remember the exact math on it. But uh, basically, we're listening for a munchlax sound. It's about a 5% spawn, so we might have to walk around a little bit. Just have to listen very carefully for the munch. Because visually, he's kind of hard to see, which is a little annoying. Come on, Munchlax sound. So many noises that aren't Munchlax. And this process normally takes like three minutes. Probably less. Depends on if we get unlucky or not. We already have two, so we could just use those if we really wanted to. But I kind of want to show it real quick. But it is a bit luck-based. Come on, show me the Snorlax. I really wish these other scorpions did not spawn here, because they look so similar. So you have to do it more on the audio cue than on the actual thing. Oh, is that one? Yep, there he is. Okay, so this is Munchlax, obviously. Um, so we'll go right into this Munchlax. He didn't hear his noise, but you can kind of see him. He kind of blends in because they both, the um, scorpion and that, both have like the same appearance. I completely forget the scorpion's name. But anyways, uh, we're here to throw a ball at you. Ideally, quick ball just works and we're good to go. Please just stay in quick ball. Uh, you can also use Thief if you really want to. I didn't bother setting up for that right now. But, you know, you can just Thief the item off of them and it'll work first time every time. Uh, which, unfortunately, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the reasons why you sometimes do the Thief method. But, uh, oh gosh, he's good. imagine if we get wiped by a Snorlax because you just used Belly Drum. That would be really funny. Uh, I can't use Dust Ball right now, so we're going to have to go the Repeat Ball method, which should be... Where's my Repeat Ball? Repeat ball! There you are. Okay, let me just use a repeat ball. I should get him in. Let's hope so. Stay in the ball. Stop getting out. Stay in there so we get leftovers. And it should be leftovers. But you can also just thief it off of it. I normally just catch it though. And there we go. Hey, gosh, we're done still level 39. Good, because I don't want that leveling. And uh, here we have ourself, what should be leftovers. There is a small chance he doesn't have it on it, but as you can see, he has leftovers. Give me that leftovers. And there we go. We now have a battle-ready Gastrodon. And uh, there we go. So now we'll go show the process for cleaning up the other one real quick. And then we'll have another battle-ready Gastrodon through the other method. So this was done through 6 IV, but incorrect nature. Oh, sorry, I didn't actually give him his nature yet. Hold up, he's not ready. I didn't give him his correct uh, nature. What am I doing? So um, I can now go over Mint Island. So Mint Island is a fun little island if you've uh, never farmed it before. Uh, normally, uh, the way I do mints for a lot of things these days is since I have a living shiny dex, or almost a living shiny dex, just missing the last few rift ones, in Pokemon Legends Arceus, uh, one thing that we can actually do is just pull from the very high amount of mints that we have in Legends Arceus, and uh, anything that exists in there, which Shellos and Gastrodon does, you can simply just mint them that way. However, there is an island in Pokemon Sword and Shield where you get a lot of mints. It's not as good as the method in Legends Arceus, but it is still good. 
Um, it, it's definitely a bit slower. It also has a really weird lean to give you serious mint like half the time, which is really annoying. It doesn't give you like an even distribution of mints. However, if you don't have the battle points already laying around, also sometimes feathers over here, they can just grab even more feathers for the stack. But anyways, if you ever run low. But mostly to around the rocks. Oh, also, don't you dare get in combat with us. Oh, he had you got into combat with me. No! Imagine if we got another shiny. I still can't believe we got that earlier this video. Because I've been hunting for that for so long. And then we just randomly get it. Well, let's go and uh, finish heading over here. All right, so uh, on the ground here, there are a bunch of spots. Um, here we have something that can sometimes be a rare candy. This tree is actually HP. Uh, you remember the HP thing we used earlier, the little berry? Well, guess what? Those pomeg berries, I believe they're called. Well, there they are. Two pomeg berries. Those are the two pomeg berries we used earlier. So you can end up getting a bunch of them from this tree. And just make sure you end before it starts doing the big shake, which I think that is. And we're good to go. All right, so... Let's go and go to what actually matters here. The mints. So there are a bunch of mints on the ground. Unfortunately, we got Dose of Energy Powder there. However, also Jar of Honey. Oh, gosh. Are we going to get no RNG here? Uh, this one's not a mint. It should be a twig. And we got a twig. Uh, this one can be a mint. Jar of Honey. Gosh, are we not going to get a single mint here? Oh, no. You can normally get like a couple mints per go sometimes. There we go. We got a quiet mint. Which, unfortunately, is not the one we need. Though it's really unrealistic that we'd get the exact one we needed here. But, uh, there we go. So, as you saw, we got one mint, a quiet mint. Not the exact one we're looking for, but, you know, you might need that at some point. However, um, we simply just keep going and uh, doing that. You can do it either either day or do the time skip thing. However, uh, this will give you a bunch of uh, mints. And now we can go uh, use that mint. We needed a calm mint, specifically. So, let's go over to our um, uh, mints and just simply use a calm on it. Um, if you, uh, have, if you do this for a while and don't have any comms, you can, of course, go and do, um, the, just simply get it for 50 battle points, which, uh, if you already have a bunch of battle points laying around, is probably the go-to method that you would be using. However, uh, you can do it from the Silence as well, or from Legends Arceus, if it exists in Legends Arceus, that is super, super easy to get mints in that game. Uh, it's literally measured by the minute rather than by, um, any other measurement. <laughs> like, you're literally getting mints per minute as far as the, uh, rate that, there. But anyways, we're also getting shinies. But uh, there we go. We now have a correct nature, six IV, naturally born Gastrodon, and a lore ball that is as battle ready as it could possibly be. It is level 39, so you can't really use it outside the battles. However, uh, it skills, a little skills to level 50, so you don't need to end up uh, worrying about that, and you're just simply good to go. Um, but yeah, every single thing is uh, absolutely correct. So now let's do this process just one last time, kind of showing how to clean up the uh, other one. So here we have uh, spec. Uh, wait, where's our other one? Where did I put my little thing? Well, worst comes to worst, I could always just do the... Wait, did I actually completely lose track of where I put it? Because I, There it is. <laughs> I was going to say. Because I want the one that's to the path to the peak, uh, as we saw right over here. Because this guy is path to the peak. Also, I did them a couple days ago when I ended up setting up. I didn't have time to actually record it that day. But I did do all the setup a couple days ago. Because I saw that post and I was like, oh, I'll go breed it immediately. <laughs> but then I didn't have time to actually record the video until now. Anyways, let's go clean up this very last uh, one then and uh, go through the process of this. So this was a six IV, but incorrect nature. Now we're going to go do, um, do it for the other one, uh, except uh, this one should be a lot quicker since we already explained most everything except the leveling part, uh, which is pretty easy. You just spam candy at it. So um, that's pretty straightforward. So this one's correct in nature. So we don't have to go through all that nature stuff. However, it is uh, incorrect IVs. So what we need to go do now is just go use a bunch of candy. You can do candy just from Dynamax Adventures. Really easy to get over a million HP per hour. There's also ways to get uh, 30 level 100s in about 30 minutes. However, that does technically use a glitch. So if you don't mind using glitches, you could end up doing it that way. However, um, the Raid Den method would be the uh, main way that you... Is the intended way of uh, doing it. So right here, uh, we'll simply just go throw a bunch of candies, either our large or any other combination of uh, other ones. Right here, it looks like it'll take us 100, which sounds about right. Uh, we This actually takes 1 million total XP. How we know this is if we go check the chart over here and go over to the experience chart, as we saw earlier, this is a medium fast growth, which a lot of Pokemon are, and this requires exactly 1 million XP. Well, guess what uh, 100 large EXP candies are? That's 1 million EXP. <laughs> so we're uh, actually going to do 99 since we already have a little bit of EXP, I guess. We could just go use one of those other ones, kind of save us on a large, which uh, isn't really that needed. But, you know, if you want to save every last one that you can, can be worth considering. Uh, so right here, we'll throw down 99. And then just simply throw down a few of the other ones. Uh, we're going to have to spam through a lot of no's right here, uh, which this is so weird that they have it like this. It was so much better in Legends Arceus and hopefully will be as well in next game. Uh, I do want our Earth Power that I do need. That's literally the only one of these we do. So we'll get that in there. 
And then um, every other move should be correct, right? Because we already gave it to it earlier. Just have to say no to the rest of these. Nope, keep old moves. Nope, keep old moves. Okay, and now it should evolve, of course. And now we'll have our evolved Gastrodon. And I always have to clean this thing up for the last few steps. So, there we go. We now have our Gastrodon. Now let's go and uh, finish the rest of these steps. Also, this one will be very easy to see that it has correct stats, which I will show at the end. Uh, because that level 39 one, not so easy to see. However, level 100, very easy to see that it is correct uh, once we have finished the full process. So we'll be able to see that right at the uh, end here. So uh, for the sake of speed, because we already showed it, uh, I'm just going to simply grab uh, a leftovers from one of the two uh, Munchlaxes that we had earlier that we showed in the video. So let me go grab uh, one of these two Munchlaxes, move this over, and uh, that's uh, just from the Munchlax method we were doing earlier. Um, just catch one of those with quick ball, repeat ball, whatever you want to put them in, and just simply go get yourself the leftovers then, and boom, if you don't already have excess leftovers. So now it has the leftovers that it needs. Now let's go do the very last uh, step here, or the last few steps. So it is now level 100. So you can see that its special defense is only decent. That's not right. It needs to be best. So let's go and head over. Oh, also, uh, one other thing. Did I not give you your markings? Because I don't believe I uh, did, and I like having my markings. Uh, this is good to know for when you're breeding as well. Uh, though it kind of still tells you, but I still like marking them. Um, so let's go and mark it with best, no good, best, best. This is incorrect, so you do not mark it. And then no good. Or not no good, but eight speed specifically, which I just mark with also the red one. Because there's no way to like do another marking like a green one or something. <laughs> there's only red and blue. So um, it basically, uh, yeah, I, this is how I mark it. You can mark it however you want, obviously. But the way I mark it is anything that is best is marked in blue. Anything that is correct lower than best is marked in red. So it's not best, but it is the correct stat. And then anything that is incorrect has no mark at all, which in this case, special defense is not correct. It's decent when it needs to be best. So now we can go hyper train. It is now level 100. We can now go and hyper train this. Um, the only way to do this is to go all the way up here, all the way at the end of the game. And uh, once you have a level 100, you just go to this tower. And of course, um, there's this guy over here and it'll give us our special defense. Just make sure not to use a gold bottle cap or anything else that might give other stats. Uh, because you specifically want your attack and your speed to be what you already bred it into. So you don't want to accidentally give that the incorrect one. We only want our special defense to be raised. Uh, unfortunately, gold bottle cap is the very first one, making it very easy to accidentally misclick. I have no clue why they did that. Anyways, uh, also, I have no clue why they don't have one that can make you train to zero. <laughs> or literally just for any stat, so you don't have to do all this weird breeding stuff to end up getting like a six. Uh, but, or an eight, I mean, for this uh, particular one. So let's start the training, and this will give us our best special defense. And this will clean up the only stat that it had incorrect, since it was five IV. Or you can kind of do it like the first one where you didn't hear how many of them were incorrect. Oops, I did not want to do it again. Uh, that's the only one we needed. Okay, now we go clean up everything else that we need to go clean on this thing. So uh, it does have the correct moveset right now, uh, right? Should, because I believe we did that earlier. So that was the only thing we were really missing. So yes, uh, Earth Power, Icy Wind, Yawn, Protect. So uh, now the other thing that we need to go do is uh, give it its EVs. Uh, since we already did the IVs and we'll be good to go. Okay, since the IVs are based on its birth thing when we hatch in the egg at the path to the peak. Okay, so let's go and uh, if I could ever menu correctly, gosh, uh, I, I so always want to go into the Pokemon menu, regardless of what I'm doing, just because you go for it for so many other things. So let me go and um, do everything that it needs candy wise. So let's go give it its candy. So this will now make it in the very rare case where we Dynamax it. Very unlikely, but might, might as well. Uh, they're pretty easy to come by. Uh, next, we can go and PP up all of its four uh, moves. Uh, this is another optional one similar to the candy where you could very much skip it and it'll still be as battle ready as you'd likely need in most situations. However, this is mostly for those super rare situations where you might just happen to need those extra moves or need to Dynamax it under whatever weird circumstance where you probably would never happen, but you never know where things happen sometimes. So there we go. Uh, so those two optional ones are now done. Now we go do the um, last little bit which of course is giving it its EVs, which uh, of course, as we saw over here, uh, it is 180, 92, 92, and 144. So let's go do those values right now. Once again, uh, we already showed it through the full first process, so we're not going to spend as much time on it as I was explaining it the first time. We're simply just going to give it its uh, 18 that we need right here for its HP. We're then going to go give it its uh, defense and um, uh, special, wait, what's the other one again? Uh, special attack. Uh, defense and special attack. So we'll both do uh, nine for these. This is the iron, so we'll do that. Now we need a special attack, which is right down here. Wait, did I just give it the wrong? No, I didn't give it the wrong one. <laughs> I can definitely see myself doing that on accident during the video. Uh, let's see. And now we need to go and feather both of those two. Wait, why are the feathers not 
in the same order. Because I don't normally use feathers. Why are the feathers in a different order than the pills? Wait, wait, wait. Am I going crazy? Why are... Really? Why on earth are the feathers in a different order than the pills? I have never noticed that. Mostly because I very rarely ever use these feathers. Because realistically, most builds are 252, 252, 4. Uh, in like almost every situation. So very rarely am I like touching these feathers. Or if I am, I'm just like doing it for one stat. Um, but really? Like a Nihiliga or whatever that thing's called. That one thing that kind of looks like a uh, Stingray. Like you need to make sure it has like a really specific speed special attack stat. Um, but uh, yeah, that's so strange. <coughs> Anyways. Let me go and give it to that it needs then. <laughs> because I, I was thinking that too when I was looking at the other one when I was doing it. That is so weird. But anyways. It's like such a small thing, but it's like, why? <laughs> why would you do that? Anyways, uh, those should now be all correct. And then uh, all we have to do is just give it the rest of its special defense. And uh, this should be correct. And uh, this is actually going to be very easy to check if it is correct, if we made any mistakes. Because it is nice, solid level 100. Uh, so very, very easy to check it on a third-party uh, tool to see if it has absolutely uh, everything. So, uh, are you now correct? You should be, so let's check each thing. Are the moves correct? Yes. Is the uh, IVs correct? Probably, we're about to find out. Check it against the things. And then, um, yep, everything else is correct. Okay, so let's go and just double check it one last time. So if we go over to uh, the website here um, and do it on uh, Showdown, uh, we can go check to see if all these stats are uh, correct. And once again, I'll go and drag this over so we can see both of them at once. And uh, here we go. So, let's see. What's the breakdown now? So, uh, it is a 180... Oh, wait. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong value. <laughs> I was looking at the uh, EV. Uh, so, it's a 408, which we have. It is a 153 for attack, which we have. It is a 195 for defense, which we have. Uh, it is a 243 for uh, special attack, which we have. It is a 259 for special defense, which it has. And it is a 91 speed for its speed, which it has. And if we now bring it down to this, this is what it would end up looking at like in a battle. Or if you actually used it in uh, competitive, it would actually come out to the stats of uh, this exact one that we're using right now. Um, it would come out to a 209 HP, a 79 attack, a 100 defense, a 124 special attack, a uh, 132 special defense, and a 48 speed. And there we go. We have now bred ourselves a bunch of uh, battle-ready ones from the uh, World Championship. The one that was used for the World Championship win uh, back in uh, about a week ago. I think it was two weeks ago at this point. Uh, it was like a week and a half at this point. Like, not last weekend, but the weekend before then. But yeah, that is the exact uh, world champion Gastrodon. And uh, we did that whole process in uh, about an hour. Obviously, if you uh, weren't, like, explaining all of this, you could very easily get one of these. If you weren't doing it from scratch, if you already had the dittos, if the only thing you needed was an 8-speed um, to try to get that from scratch, this whole process can easily be done in about half an hour to an uh, hour. But, of course, we were kind of just explaining through all of it, kind of going through all the nitty-gritty without doing too much showing. I hope I showed enough. If you guys still have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I've been breeding a lot this year. I actually have 2,000-something hours in Sword and Shield. And more than half of that has been breeding. I really got into breeding back in uh, April. And I don't know, it's been a very fun uh, process being able to go and uh, breed. Uh, and this is definitely one of the more weirder breeds I've definitely done. Because normally, you know, you're breeding stuff very straightforward. Like uh, something like this. Well, this isn't something you breed. But, you know, uh, normally, like, you're, you're doing a stat distribution like that. Uh, where you only need, like, maybe one value instead of two and uh, stuff like that. But, um... Like, even this is a little bit simpler. Well, it's still kind of a little bit weird. But <laughs> normally it's, like, that really straightforward and you're just kind of good to go. But anyways, um, yeah, I guess that will wrap it up now. We now have two, well, technically three because I did the other one earlier before uh, we ended up uh, starting all this. But now we have a bunch of lore ball uh, Gasherons that are battle ready to the exact uh, specifications of what was used at the World Championship. And we did it in basically under an hour. Uh, just with a lot of explaining that made it go very long, as well as a shiny ditto. How? How do we get it? Where, where's that shiny ditto? How did this happen? <laughs> I went so dry on it for so long, and we just go there and get it. That is so insane. Uh, I Also, I kind of want one in a beast ball now that I got one in a dream. Uh, I might get a few more. I'm just assuming it would be way easier to get next generation, as the method for doing it this generation with no overworld shinies is kind of annoying. Um, so I'm probably just going to wait on that before we end up um, doing that. But um, yeah, I'm probably not going to bother hunting for another one. <laughs> we got we got lucky there. I already went for enough of them. I do not need to go for more. Anyways, guys, that will wrap it up. And um, yeah, that is how you get the world champion Yasherdon. Definitely a very weird one. But there we go. We now have three 
a perfect uh, Gastrodon. Secondly, we even have a fourth one, which I almost just want to keep as is if we ever want to breed with it. A very perfect one that has, uh, which is actually rarer than a shiny. It's a 1 in 31, or sorry, 1 in 32 combined with a 1 in 21 uh, to end up rolling this, which is actually slightly rarer than shiny odds. I was trying to do Masuda to try to get a shiny, which unfortunately we didn't. However, we got the next best thing. We got the best, best stats one. I'm not going to go fix this one up this video. You know, it'd be the same process of what we just already did slightly quicker. Uh, you've already seen it twice. You don't need to see it again. <laughs> However, um, yeah, we did get a perfect one, which is really cool. I'm kind of keeping this as like a little trophy of what we did here. Well, I guess that ended ditto, <laughs> which was more of an unexpected one from all this process. But um, yeah, and if you guys need any of these, do let me know. I'm not sure how many views this will get because um, generally when I cover Pokemon videos, they go in one of two ways. They either pop off or they go into the abyss of YouTube and are never seen again. So we'll see what happens with this video. But um, yeah, if any of you just want to comment, like, hey, I want one of those Gastrodons, let me know. I am going to be keeping these. Uh, the way that uh, it works normally when you have spares like this, a lot of times I just scrap them. So um, I, probably if you're like commenting weeks from now, it might already be scrapped. <laughs> However, um, generally what you do with the breeding bases is uh, these, the six IV ones you trade in trading groups like Discord. The ones like these you send over to Pokemon Home. The reason for this is they're in a Apricorn Ball while showing everything that they need to do because you can't see ivs in uh the, the born ivs that they have so the person trading uh for it doesn't know what it has all they see pretty much is the ball and the nature uh and the hidden ability so they see that it has storm drain which is correct they see that it has um the correct nature which is correct and they see it has a lore ball which is correct if they're looking for a, a lore ball one which is generally generally what you're going to go for gastrodon if you're going for one of the rare balls know if someone might want something else but you know um it's just the one we end up doing it for for this particular situation but uh yeah it has everything that you'd be looking for in pokemon home if you were looking for a gastrodon so uh these very quickly can trade for like legendaries other apple balls stuff like that so you can kind of just do that to get a higher stock if you really want to just kind of keep them in there um but that's generally what they do these go to home these go to trade groups and uh otherwise they get scrapped after a certain amount of time because gosh pokemon home does not have enough storage but anyways guys that is the full process on the whole uh gastrodon there uh still have any other questions feel free to leave it in the comment section below i hope i explained everything to at least a decent degree uh i don't normally cover like videos exactly kind of explaining these things however i might going into the future scarlet violets around the corner i have heard that they're going to be making it harder to potentially breed next um next generation which means hey if you get really good at breeding a sword and shield uh once pokemon home access comes in just breed them in sword and shield send them over to next gen assuming they can be and you're good to go so the only things you'd have to do is everything anything not possible in sword and shield uh, that's assuming they do make breeding harder uh, i i assume they'll make breeding easier but you know you never know with nintendo sometimes or game freak or uh any other company involved <laughs> but uh time will tell Anyways, guys, I will catch you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave a like on the video. Subscribe. We cover quite a bit of uh, variety here uh, overall, but uh, we cover Pokemon here and there. Definitely will be leading up to Scarlet and Violet, as well as Scarlet and Violet itself, of course. Uh, big fan of uh, Pokemon. Got back into it this year with Legends Arceus earlier this year. Got nearly a living shiny decks after about a thousand hours. And uh, that was just kind of been messing with Sword and Shield, trying to breed a bunch of stuff for next gen. So we have everything ready to go uh, for next generation. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you later. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you all have a wonderful week. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching.